boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand. It's been a national security issue when you have countries that are profiting off of oil and the increased price of oil uh, that, that don't like Israel, that don't like America. Uh, we don't want, uh, for instance, Russia to be able to, to get a windfall in profit uh, from the oil market so that they can then turn that around and, and, uh, and, and apply that to uh, in Ukraine. We certainly don't want to see Iran. Uh, uh, do be able to do much of the same, which is why we're, we're, we're putting as much pressure on them as we are. So why not increase oil production here? I, again, I don't have any announcements okay, to make today. Go ahead. Um, thanks. Um, just to follow up on Brian's question, I know contours of the congressional package is still taking shape, but can you provide us anything on a timeline or give us a sense of how quickly the U.S. would exhaust what it can provide to Israel before Congressional action is needed. We have existing authorities and appropriations to support uh, uh, Israel in the near term. And I got asked last time, you know, what does near term or what's a bit mean? I, I, I can't give you a date certain on the calendar because a lot of it's going to depend on their expenditure rate and what the replenishment ability uh, is or what the need is and what our ability to do it is. Uh, but in the near term, we've, we've got, uh. got appropriations and authorities for both Ukraine and for Israel. But you don't want to be trying to bake in long-term support when you're at the end of the rope. And uh, in Ukraine, on the Ukraine funding, we're, we're coming near to the end of the rope. I mean, today we announced $200 million, um, and we'll keep that aid going as long as we can, but it, it's, it's not going to be in debt.